Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is April 17, 2016. I think it's Christmas in April for me. I have found an investigative blogger. Yes, a blogger who is actually investigating the Lavoy Finicum case. Isn't that crazy? I'm at the Regulator blog at an article titled Mark McConnell and the Mysterious Case of the Missing Name, dated April 16, 2016 and written by a descendant of a regulator. On Wednesday, April 13th, I tuned into Challenging the Rhetoric with Sherry Roberts, expecting to hear a deep conversation with her guests, Mark McConnell and Melvin Lee. The event was advertised as follows. And you can look at the event there. I copied and pasted the above quote directly from the website of Sherry Roberts. Mark McConnell and his friend Melvin Lee became the subject of much interest and scrutiny after they each released a Facebook video purporting to correct any misconceptions about what transpired at the traffic stop that ended up with the shooting death of Robert Lavoie Finnicum and the arrest of Ammon Bundy, Ryan Bundy, Ryan Payne, Brian Cavalier, and Shauna Cox. What's particularly interesting is that neither Mark McConnell nor Melvin Lee were actually in the vehicle with LaVoy Finnicum. Hmm. In fact, Melvin Lee was not present at the incident at all. And Mark McConnell was in a separate vehicle and had already been detained by the time LaVoy Finnicum was shot and killed in the joint operation by the Oregon State Police and the FBI. The fact that these men both released videos so quickly after the shooting and the fact that Mark McConnell was not arrested with the others raised many questions. The advertisement for Sherry Roberts' show promised a deep conversation with Mark McConnell and Melvin Lee, so I, like many others, was very interested to listen in. I knew that Sherry Roberts had reviewed the report released by Deschutes County Sheriff's Department entitled Redacted Investigative Reports Part 1. Due to her article, 94 Points of Interest in Deschutes County Sheriff's incident report detailing Oregon standoff operation resulting in death of Lavoie Finnicum. I also reviewed the same investigative report shortly after it was released and was struck by the fact that there was no mention of Mark McConnell by name in the entire 360 page document. Wow! Well that's really interesting. Hmm. Let me repeat that. The fact that there was no mention of Mark McConnell by name in the entire 360 page document. I was really hoping that Sherry might address the mystery of the missing name during the interview. Unfortunately, this was not the case. I didn't once hear her mention his, this curious case of the missing name in the report. In her 94 Points of Interest article, Sherry does bring out several points that involve Mark McConnell. And I'll leave the link, and you can read this for yourself. However, if we actually look at what was said, or in this case, what was not said, it becomes much more interesting. There were seven officers interviewed in the report. Officers 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And let's start with Sherry's point 43, page 211, officer number 7. They do a wonderful job of giving all of their evidence here. This is, this is wonderful. So officer 7 doesn't name Mark McConnell as the driver of the Jeep in this snippet of his interview. Sherry noted that with the use of parentheses in her point 43. What I find more interesting though is that what the same officer said earlier in his interview from page 197. They have it copy and pasted there. So officer number seven can't even remember the name of the driver of the Jeep, but he was briefed ahead of time as to who would be in each of the two vehicles. Now let's move on to Sherry's next point that mentions Mark McConnell, point 57, page 253, officer number six. Again, Sherry has Mark McConnell's name in parentheses, indicating that she added this bit of information. 
So what is actually said by Officer 6 on page 253 on this report? So Officer 6 mistakenly refers to Mark McConnell as Mr. Cavalier and then names Buddha as the last person to leave the vehicle. So finally we move on to Sherry's last point referencing Mark McConnell. Point number 71, page 276, officer number 8. In this case she does make note that all seem to be confused as to Mark McConnell's name. Sherry left off a few additional mentions of the Jeep and the driver. Officer number 1 in his testimony on page 81 and 82 had this to say about the Jeep and the driver of the Jeep. In the orange Jeep as it was described to us there was I don't recall the driver's name there was a driver there was Cavalier who was mentioned to be in the front passenger seat and there was Ammon Bundy in the back seat or that could have been mixed up these two were in there I don't recall the name of the driver now what does officer number four have to say about this Jeep Here's a statement from him from page 150 of the report. So there was obviously some confusion about the color of the Jeep. Remember that Officer 1 also mentioned the orange Jeep as it was described to us. Note that Officer number 4 states that the Jeep was called orange, but it ended up being more of a tannish orange weird color later on in 155. So according to Officer 4, the Jeep actually started braking before any lights came on or anything. Now let's move on to Officer 5. On pages 236 and 237, Officer 5 makes a pretty interesting statement. Officer 5, yeah, minimal because we knew that vehicle that was the first one to stop, so it wouldn't have been the back of their two vehicles. We knew it was going to stop. Um, I remember as we pulled out behind them, somebody mentioned, uh, you know, execute traffic stop. This was a distance of maybe a quarter, half mile after we turned on the highway. Now, I'm not completely sure about this statement, but it clearly seems to me that Officer 5 is saying that he knew ahead of time that the Jeep was going to stop. How would they expect ahead of time that the Jeep would definitely stop? Remember that Officer Number 4 made mention that the Jeep actually started braking before any lights came on. Taken together, these two statements definitely raise questions in my mind. Finally, on page 358, the following summer of the arrest is included in the report. The crime scene was located at U.S. Highway 395 near Milepost 50. The crime scene evidence was identified as a white Dodge pickup truck, a green Jeep associated to Ryan Payne, and Lavoy Finnicum deceased at scene. Persons arrested at the scene were Ammon Bundy, Ryan Bundy, Ryan Payne, Brian Cavalier, Shauna Cox, and a juvenile female. Officers involved in the shooting were Officer No. 1, Officer number two, officer number three, and officer number four. Lavoy Finnicum's vehicle, a white 2015 Dodge Ram pickup truck bearing Arizona license plate and the VIN numbers there, was at the shooting scene. One thing to note here is that the Jeep is listed as being green. This appears to be due to the confusion of the officers as to the exact color of the Jeep. They had been told to expect an orange Jeep, but apparently they didn't completely agree with that characterization. Isn't it interesting that the Jeep is noted as being associated with Ryan Payne? Ryan Payne wasn't even a passenger in the Jeep. He was a passenger in Lavoie's truck. Also interesting is that everyone is named here except Mark McConnell and Victoria Sharp. Victoria is at least referred to in this summary as the juvenile female. The final interesting point is that Lavoie's vehicle license plate and VIN number is included. Not so for the Jeep. That is a really interesting point. Now I wasn't present in Oregon and I don't personally know any of the people involved. I've never listened to the Challenging the Rhetoric radio show before, and I don't really know much of the background of Sherry Roberts.
I do know that she stated multiple times in her interview with Mark McConnell and Melvin Lee that she had many fed sources. In fact, at around the 59 minute mark of the interview, she mentions that the feds that she talks to were probably listening to the interview and monitoring the chat room. I wonder if she asked these sources if it was unusual that Mark McConnell's name was completely scrubbed from part one of the investigative report. Note there is a brief mention of him in part two that was released some time after part one. Is it unusual that these officers either couldn't remember Mark's name or incorrectly identified him as Mr. Cavalier. Mark was certainly detained for some time, and it would seem that he would have given his identification at some point to the officers. It certainly seems that he would have been investigated before being released. Perhaps it was only the FBI who was privy to that information. I just find it really odd that these facts were never mentioned in Sherry's interview. Well, you know, a descendant of a regulator? Something just, just struck me as well. I mean, is it possible that the feds were trying to make it look like Cavalier was the fed in this? To take your eyes off of McConnell and put them on Cavalier as being the fed? Could that be a possibility? And of course, we have curious officer number five, we knew it was going to stop. Um, I remember as we pulled out behind them, uh, somebody mentioned, uh, you know, execute traffic stop. This was a distance of maybe a quarter to half mile after we turned onto the highway. I hear, okay, initiating stop. And that's when their lights come on. But it certainly seems to me that officer number five is saying that he knew ahead of time that the Jeep was going to stop. This is what really grabbed my attention when they pointed out, remember that officer number four made mention that the Jeep actually started braking before any lights came on. See, that's the clincher for me. Why would a Jeep break? I mean, maybe the roads were slick. There may have been a turn. Who knows? But taken together with these two statements definitely raise questions in my mind. And I believe it was a setup. But anyway, let's move on. Now, in this article, they also have a link to Dennis Michael Lynch unfiltered Bundy's Behind Bars Part 4. Let's check that out. Um, okay. And so how did it wind up happening that Ammon's truck didn't continue with you when you guys decided to move forward? The driver was a paid FBI agent, or at least paid by the FBI, and he had done the whole setup, and he was the driver, and that's why he didn't keep going, I assume. So, so the driver in Ammon's car? Yes, was a paid operative. Was a paid operative. My, my, my. Seems like Ryan Bundy knows what's going on. Who do you believe? Do you believe Mark McConnell? the person that interviewed him with their talk show? Or do you believe Dennis Michael Lynch unfiltered and Ryan Bundy? Hmm. I know who I'm going to believe. Maybe this person that did the interview will comment or want to talk about this and maybe set the record straight. Who knows? Tell me your thoughts. Comment below. This is Call of Duty Goddess, and I'll leave the link below for this blogger. Signing off, and as always, I've got your six.